The Girl Who Thought in Pictures. The story of Dr. Temple Grandin. The Girl Who Thought in Pictures. I see a lot of cows here. The Girl Who Thought in Pictures. The Story of Dr. Temple Grandin, written by Julia Finley Mosca, illustrated by Daniel Riley. If you've ever felt different, if you've ever been low, if you don't quite fit in, there's a name you should know, Temple Grandin's that name. In her tale, you'll find glory. So get ready, get set for this cowgirl's true story. In the city of Boston, uh, one hot summer day, a sweet baby was born. It was Temple Hooray. <clears throat> Unique from the start, an unusual girl. She loves spinning in circles and watching things twirl. But some things she hated, like certain loud sounds or bright crowded places, large cities and towns, frilly dresses with tags made her itch, pull, and tug. Something else that she hated, a big squeezy hug. A shy loner, this temple, but when she got mad, when her feelings of stress and frustration got bad, quite a temper she'd throw. Kick, holler, bang, squeak. Yet still, by age three, not one word did she speak. She'll never be normal, was what some did say. Her brain's not quite right. You must send her away. Away? Not my temple, her mother proclaimed. We will figure this out. You should all be ashamed. Then, little by little, though sometimes she balked, special teachers helped Temple, and one day she talked. And that thing with her brain, it was autism, see? She was different, not less. They all finally agreed. Like most kids her age, she loved ice cream and art. But the way Temple thought, that's what set her apart. If something was mentioned, for instance, a fly, in her mind, she'd see dozens of photos buzz by. When the time came for school, let's just say that was hard. Kids taunted and chased her all over the yard. They picked on poor Temple. How crazy it drove her. They teased her for saying things over and over and over and over and over. Look at her. Until finally she snapped. Yes, she did. Lost her cool threw a book at a kid and was kicked out of school. No one really got Temple, but well, then again, the truth of it was Temple didn't get them. You need time away, said her mom. That's what's best. You'll go visit your aunt on a ranch way out west. And guess what? Fitting in on a farm was less stress. Since the pigs didn't care if her brain was, if her hair was a mess. Quite a sweet spot she had for the cows in, her, in their herds. Such big gentle beasts who knew nothing of words. As she watched her new friends, a thought popped in her head. These cows think like me in pictures instead. At a new school that fall, Temple found more support and a teacher who taught her 
you'll never fall short. When you find what you're good at, like science, you'll soar. And that teacher was right. He had opened a door. So she built a machine like she'd seen on some farms. An invention that, might, that hugged her with boards and not arms. It worked. She had done it from memory. It's true. And just like the cows, it made Temple calm too. I'm special, she thought, like a bright shooting star. My attention to details could help me go far. Though her studies she learned, through her studies she learned, there were farms not so kind. I will help them, she said, some solution she'd find. And then something cool, can you guess, could it be? Off to college, she went. A degree, she earned three. And though ladies weren't experts on farms at that time, do you think that stopped Temple? No way, she did fine. She stepped through that door and went forward, no tears. She took on the world, but at times she had fears because some things were scary, like people she'd meet who'd ignore her ideas and, well, wouldn't be sweet. But she never gave up, learned her stuff through and through, like why cattle will circle and what makes them moo. To build better farms was her goal. She would do it. Be kind to our creatures. They have feelings too. She knew it. And slowly but surely, she changed many minds until farm after farm, built her awesome designs. Word spread about Temple, her feet's not so small. Temple Grandin, she's grand. She's the grandest of all. Now for these things and more, she won honors and prizes and a movie was made. But the biggest surprise is that girl with the future that couldn't be bleaker. Yes, the once silent girl, she is now a big speaker. Today, she spreads hope with her stories and speeches from New York to Sydney to Rome, Temple teaches. Each person is special, so unique are our minds. This world needs your ideas. It takes brains of all kinds. So here is the lesson, feeling odd or offbeat. Being different might just be what makes you so neat. Don't let doubt hold you back, not for one minute more. Stand tall and like Temple, march right through that door. Dear reader, as a child, I was really glad that my mother always encouraged my ability in art. I encourage you to find something you are good at and work on developing it. If you are interested in becoming a scientist like me, find cool new ways to look at things such as microscopes and telescopes. Explore nature. Think up your own hands-on science experiments. Keep learning, especially from your mistakes. And here she is, Temple Grandin, with her cows. Fun facts and tidbits from the author's chat with Temple. A spaced out childhood. If it flew, I loved it, Temple said when asked about her childhood hobbies. As a little kid, I worshiped astronauts. In addition to playing with kites, airplanes, and spaceships, she was also fond of drawing. I'd have been lost in school without an art class, she said. During her teenage years, Temple developed a new passion for television shows like Men Into Space, The Twilight Zone, and The Man from Uncle. I was a total Star Trek fan, she admitted. Her favorite character, Mr. Spock, of course, a lovable half-human 
who often had trouble relating to certain emotions. A real cowgirl movie. Only a few people in the world can say they've been the subject of a Hollywood movie. And Temple is one of them. In 2010, HBO released Temple Grandin, starring actress Claire Danes, who won a Golden Globe Award for her role as the well-known scientist. The docudrama focused on Temple's early life with autism and her long accomplished career in the livestock industry. I love the fact that my actual drawings were in the movie, she said, referring to the blueprints for her inventions. Temple said she was also glad that the film included the three most important people in her life, all of the main characters in the movie. Mr. Carlock, Aunt Anne, and Mother were shown very nicely. A signature look. When you picture Temple Grandin, one item of clothing probably comes to mind. Cowboy shirts. Over the years, the famous animal scientist was built up an amazing collection of the tops which she often likes to pair with one of her signature scarves. But Temple didn't always have such a confident and unique sense of style. I had people who told me I did have to clean it up. She admitted, as a child and young adult, she hated dressing up, especially in anything itchy. When she discovered cowboy shirts, which she prefers to wear over a soft cotton t-shirt, they just worked, and today it's hard to find her anything else. In 2011, Temple even wore her trademark look to the prestigious Golden Globe Awards ceremony in Hollywood. A woman in a man's world. Ask Temple about working on farms as an animal scientist in the 1970s, and the answer might surprise you. That was worse than the autism was. Much worse, she said, even with all the obstacles she faced. As a child and teen, Temple said her greatest challenge in life was being a woman in a man's world. That was not easy. She added that during that time, the only woman working in Arizona fed lots were secretaries in the office. So what kept Temple going when the odds seemed stacked against her? I wanted to prove to people that I was not stupid, that I could do it, and that motivated me. A doorway to the future. A study of Temple's journey would not be complete without the mention of doors. You see, for Temple, they aren't simply a way to get in and out of a room, but a symbol of what's to come. In order to think about something abstract like my future, I have to have something I can actually visu visualize, like a door, she explained. Temple said she first came up with the idea as a young girl when the suggestion of moving on to new experiences of places could be frightening. Picturing herself stepping through a doorway helped ease some of that anxiety. That's the way I thought about it. Everything, she admitted. A wordy accomplishment. Who would believe that a girl who didn't speak as a small child would someday travel the world as a famous speaker? If you've heard one of Temple's captivating lectures, then you know it's possible. Still spreading her message in front of large crowds didn't always come easily. I wasn't a good public speaker when I first started, she admitted. When I was in graduate school, I panicked and walked out of my first talk. So how did she get so good? A lot of practice and one particular secret weapon. I made sure I had really good slides to cue me. She explained, I was an awkward speaker, but I had fantastic slides. And you can see a timeline of all of her achievements and accomplishments and just things in her life. And then there is some more information that
that if you check out this book sometime, you might decide to read up even more. Or maybe this will inspire you to research